it was ever a long shot to make the NHL. This guy was it. He turned into a superstar goalie, probably one of the most hated goalies of his generation. But look who what he came from. So one of the toughest families of all time. So this podcast, we're not looking at his whole career, especially in management, because he's given a lot back to hockey uh, in retirement. But Ron Hextall has always been a polarizing figure. And for me, he's quite a bit of a polarizing figure because he was born with my name as his middle name. And I'm not a big fan of Ron Hextall, not because I don't respect his talent, but the, the problem he had with the Montreal Canadiens in his early career really stands out. So this podcast will look at how he made the NHL and his infamous um, uh, uh, final appearance for the Flyers against uh, Edmonton in the 87 Cup run. Now, Ronald Jeffrey Hextall, born May 3rd, 64, He's currently uh, acting as a GM at the Pittsburgh Penguins of the NHL. Now, Hextall played 11 seasons for the Flyers, the Nordiques, and the Islanders. He also served as the assistant GM for the Flyers for one year before being promoted to GM at the Flyers, replacing Paul Holmgren on May 7, 2014. He held his position for four and a half seasons. Before this, he served as an assistant GM for the Kings. He won the Stanley Cup in 2012. Now, he played 11 of his 13 seasons over two stints with the Flyers. He holds several team records and is a member of the Flyers Hall of Fame. Now, during his rookie campaign in 87, he was awarded the Vezina Trophy as a league's top goalie and led the Flyers to the Stanley Cup Finals. Despite the Flyers' loss to the Oilers in seven games, <coughs> he won the Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoffs' most valuable player, making one of the only five players to win the trophy in a losing eff effort. Of course, you remember Roger Crozier was the first <coughs> goalie to win it uh, in the losing cause. Now, injuries in the middle of his career contributed to a drop in his playing ability. As a result, he was traded on three occasions in the off-seasons between 92 and 94 to the Nordiques, the Islanders, and then back to the Flyers. Upon his return to Philadelphia, Hextall regained confidence and form, recording goals against averages below three in each of his five subsequent seasons, the lowest of his career, and he retired from the NHL as the, at the end of the 89th season. Now, the native Brandon Manitoba, he said he was 6'3", 205. I think it was the biggest, uh, bigger than that. But he was known for a, a lot of goalie situations. Uh, he became the first initial goalie to score a goal by shooting the puck into the opponent's empty net against the Boston Bruins in the 88 season. The following year became the first goalie to score in the playoffs by shooting the puck into the Washington Capitals' empty cage. His mobile style of play, in which he provided support to his defenseman by coming out of the goal area to play the puck, was revolutionary for a person his size and inspired future generations of goalies, such as Martin Brodeur. He was also known for being one of the NHL's most aggressive goaltenders. He was suspended for six or more games on three occasions, had more than 100 penalty minutes in each of his first three campaigns, and set new records for the number of penalty minutes recorded by a goalie in the NHL. Now, this is how it worked with uh, Mr. Hextall. Now, he was the third and youngest child of Brian and Faye Hextall. Now, Hextall, again, is a third-generation player. His grandfather, Hall of Famer Brian Hextall, played 11 seasons with the Rangers and was inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame in 69. His father, Brian Hextall Jr., played in the NHL for 10 seasons, most notably for the Penguins. And his uncle, Dennis Hextall, played 14 campaigns of NHL hockey, not staying with any one club for longer than five years, but was well known for his good years with the Minnesota North Stars in the mid 70s. During his youth, Hextall saw his father and uncle often roughed up, often roughed up by the Flyers, whose aggressive style of play for much of the 70s gave the team the name the Broad Street Bullies. Hextall later reflected that during this period, he hated the Flyers. Now, because of his father's career, Hextall's education was far from stable. Each year began at Brandon, and once the hockey season commenced in October, he moved to a school near where his father was playing. At school, he achieved B and C grades, putting in a minimum amount of effort, but his mind remained on hockey, and specifically goaltending. Everybody else would be working, they'd be drawing pictures of Tony Esposito and Jimmy Rutherford, you recall. Hextall came to, came to mostly enjoy the constant moving, later saying, I got to hang around Angel Rinks, what more would I have wanted? Now, although Boy's father and grandfather played at forward position, his father was, was happy for him to play in goal, but insisted that he try other positions to improve his skating. Brian believed his son would have made a good defenseman. Hextall's mother thought her son's love for hockey exceeded 
did that of her husband's teammates and I believe it would drive him to achieve his aim of playing goalie in the NHL. Each summer, Hextall received training at the hockey school at which his father taught, but the hockey programs in Pittsburgh and Atlanta were substandard in his opinion and meant that during his teenage years, he was behind many of his fellow players. He describes himself as not what you would call real polish in her first year of junior hockey, age 17. Now this is where Ware became legendary. He began his junior career not in Major Junior, but in, with the Melville Millionaires in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League in the 81 season. Uh, now, that campaign with the club, he played 37 games with a goals against average of 6.57. In one game that season against the Prince Albert Raiders, Hextall faced 105 shots and made 84 saves. By, uh, and gave up 21 goals, a performance described as brilliant by the Regina Leader Post. Although the Millionaires lost by 19, 21 to 2, the reporter noted that if it was not for Hextall, uh, the Raiders could have scored 34 or 35. Millionaires teammate Mark Od Odnokon praised his performance, particularly the way he lived up to his responsibilities and stayed in there until the end. In 2009, he was inducted in as one of the inaugural members of the SJHL Hall of Fame. Now, Hexall returned to Brandon for the 82 season, playing for the Brandon Wheat Kings in the WHL. He played 30 regular season games for the Wheat Kings, during which he recorded a goals against average of 5.71. Now, to put this in perspective, that was something you would see in a Quebec Major Junior Hockey League goalie because it was a, like a, a high demand to have a goalie that could take a lot of shots because it was very wide open. The Wee Kings, because of uh, Hexall's play and his teammates, reached the playoffs, but they were swept four, four straight in the first round by the Regina Pats. Hexall played in three games, but completed only two and had a goal against average of 9.32. His team was regarded as poor one at the time by critics, and Hexall had a battle in each game. Flyers coach Jerry Melnick said he could understand why many teams did not raid Hextall. There were teams who thought he was loony. <laughs> no comment. Melnick claimed it was these attributes which he was attracted by, and he felt that Hextall could fit, fit in well with the Flyers. Subsequently, the Flyers shows Hextall in the sixth round of the 82 draft, 119th overall, which was a steal, ladies and gentlemen. After his selection, Hexall remained with Brandon for the two for two future seasons. He played 44 games in 83, recording a GAA of 5.77 during a season which the Wheat Kings did not qualify for the playoffs. The following year was his most successful in the WHO, as his goals against average went down by a goal and a half across his 46 regular season games, which included 29 wins, more than in the previous two seasons combined. He played in 10 of the 12 playoff games his team was entered, recording 5 wins and 5 losses, with a goals against average of 3.75. During the 84 season, Hextall set a record for most penalty minutes accumulated by a goalie being assessed for 117 minutes during the regular season. Now, Hextall arrived at the Flyers training camp in 84 with the expectation to play in the NHL. However, they subsequently sent him to their farm team in the IHL, the Kalamazoo Wings. Although disappointed, Hexall was now playing at a higher level than at the WHL and made his debut in professional hockey. He played 19 games for Kalamazoo that year, recording 6 wins in a GAA of 4.35. During the season, he moved to the Flyers' other farm team, the Hershey Bears of AHL, where he played 11 games with 4 wins and a 3.68 goals against average. The following season, he remained with Hershey, appearing in 53 games during the 86 campaign. He took home 30 wins with the lowest G goals against average in his career to that point, 3.41. The Bears finished their regular season as league leaders and won the John D. Chick Trophy as the South Division champions. Hexall lived up to his aggressive reputation in the conference final, playing against the St. Catherine Saints, fighting three different members of the opposition side during a single bench-clearing brawl. The Bears advanced to the Collar Cup final, having beaten uh, New Haven 4-1 and St. Catharines 4-3. In the final, they faced the Adirondack Red Wings, who won the title four games to two. Hextall played 13 games in the playoffs, of which his team won five, and his goal against average was 3.223. He was named as the Dudley Red Garrett Memorial Award winner as the AHL's outstanding rookie. Looking back in his time in the AHL, 
Hex Hexall reflected that despite his initial disappointment and not being selected to play for Flyers straight away, the two years I spent in the AHL got me to the point where I was sure I could be a number one goalie in the NHL. Now, after his performance in the AHL, he was invited to the Flyers training camp as a long shot. He played in four preseason games, which convinced Flyers coach Mike Keenan to call her up Hextall to the NHL and play in the opening game of the 87th season against the Oilers. Hextall conceded a goal for the first shot he faced in the game, but allowed no further shots past him, leading his team to a 2-1 victory. Hextall then continued to display the aggressive nature with which he had always played, swinging his stick at Brad Smith and Troy Murray early in the first NHL season. Despite these swipes, Hextall claimed at the time that I used to be worse, I've learned to control my temper. Two months after making these comments, Hextall was involved in a fight with opposing Devils goalie Anna Chevalier. Having lost to the Devils, the Flyers won a revenge for Steve Richmond's punts on Shell Samuels at the end of the game. Hextall targeted Chevalier in a fight labeled by Chico Resch as like a heavyweight against a lightweight. Hextall and 700 players were fined $300 each for the part in the ball. Now, in 66 regular season uh, games during his rookie year, Hextall posted a goals against average of 3.0 and recorded 37 wins. He was awarded the Vincent Trophy for the most outstanding goalie by the NHL general managers, but he was second in voting to Luke Ribotai for the Calder awarded to the player selected as the most proficient in his first year of competition. Now, he led the Flyers to top their conference and win the Prince of Wales Trophy. The Flyers progressed to face the Oilers in the Stanley Cup Finals, having beaten the Rangers 4-2, the New York Islanders 4 games to 3, and the defending Stanley Cup champion Montreal Canadiens 4-2 in a very better six-game series that had a pre-game brawl in the final game at the Forum. Following their series win over Montreal, Flair Flyers captain Dave Poulin identified Hextall as the team's leading performer. In a fourth game of the finals, Hextall received two penalties, first a 10-minute misconduct penalty for expressing his displeasure at the 4 dollar goal, and later a five-minute penalty for slashing Kelton, Kent Nielsen. Look at the YouTube with that, he almost cut him in half, ladies and gentlemen. In the latter incident, Hextall had received a slash from Glenn Anderson, for which there was no call for the referees, and Hextall sought revenge by striking the back of Nielsen's knees. After the game, Hextall expressed remorse for striking the wrong player, but not for his action. If somebody slaps you in the face, you want to slap him back, it's not like he gave me a touch to jar the puck. What's he going to do next? Break my arm? I'm sorry it was Nielsen or not answered yet, but I just reacted. At the time, it seemed the right thing to do. Now, the performance of Hextall in the next game tied the series and forced the seventh game. At the end, the Flyers team surrounded Hextall in congratulation, and the Blowers player Kevin Lowe said Hextall held him in it. Between the six and seven games, the Oilers forward Wayne Gretzky uh, described Hextall as probably the best goalie I've ever played against in the NHL. Edmonton won the final game of the series to take the Stanley Cup pretty well on a late insurance goal. Now, Robin Finn, writing in the New York Times, said that the team won the title without their trademark, those endless waves of madcap scoring, primarily due to heroics of Hextall. Flyers uh, teammate Rick Tockett said that when he uh, realized the side were going to lose, he first thought was to feel sorry for Ronnie Hextall because he did everything he could to get us there and keep us in it. Hextall was again awarded the MVP of the, the playoffs to Conn Smite and becoming only the fourth player from a losing side to be awarded the trophy. Now, during the offseason, which was very controversial, he received an eight-game suspension for the start of the 88 campaign after he slashed on Nielsen. Speaking on behalf of the NHL, Brian O'Neill said that there's no justification for any player to swing his stick in retaliation, and this is especially the case for a goalie whose stick, because of his weight, can cause serious injury. Now, I covered the series. I was a young journalist. He should have been suspended automatically. Five-game suspension, uh, fine. But for some reason, he was allowed to play continuing the series. Uh, I really don't understand that. You can understand with like Dale Hunter, the series was done with that hit on Terjean. But at that point in his career, Rodney Hextall was extremely dedicated, extremely angry, and extremely talented. And the thing is, his motivation, the Flyers, he, he was like a sixth player on the ice, like a third uh, defenseman or a fourth forward. And you went to a zone, you know where you're going to pay. Now, 
we thought it was going to lead to multiple Stanley Cups, but there was a whole bunch of drama happening happen ever. I just wanted to talk about his early career because I don't know of any player in NHL history for that for one season changed the way we looked at the goalie position so quickly because we already had Patrick Waugh we already had Billy Smith we already had the intense player Billy wasn't scared to hit but Billy was just a fucking fucking runt man compared to Hexall Hexall was a big man six foot six on uh, skates Zidino Chara was a bigger player but Hexall the big jersey you know the Flyers and I can tell you that this is true. The 1987 Edmonton Oilers were just as good as the uh, the, the 80, uh, 84, and 85 champs. They had Wetzky, they had Messi, and they had, were having a hard time beating the Flyers, a very difficult time, because of Hextall, you couldn't play your game. Because you get past the defenseman, you had Hextall in front of them, and they were basically saying, you know, can we beat this guy? Anyway. Ron Hextall, every respect I have for him, I don't like him as a player. I know as a as a as a as a developer and all that, he's he's a, he's he's very attuned. But he's Hextall. What do you expect? It's like the Sutters. They're tough. They're not there. They're not there because their last name is Jones. They're last. They're there because they're Hextall or the Sutters. They're tough. They're tough friggin' nuts, right? You know, it's like we always can't kill, kill Kent Nielsen, the quietest and nicest player that the Oilers had at the time, in my opinion. He almost cut him in half. Just look at the YouTube. He just he's looking around. It's almost like a like a shark that's been blinded by a dolphin, and he just bites into the next dolphin. Seriously, but that the Montreal Canadian six game series, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, my God, what drama! All about Shane Corse and all kind of craziness. And put it this way: when the Broad Street Bullies returned, it was due to Ron Hexall. Seriously, it was a weird time for hockey. So if you like what we're doing with our Vintage NHL podcast, let us know with a like, comment, and subscribe. If you're a Ron Hextall fan, tell, tell me why you think he's great. If you, you're not a fan of his, tell me why, like a lot of people at the time, we thought he was the biggest asshole on two skates, besides certain other people. Thanks for listening. And by the way, if you didn't like Gretzky, you like Ron Hextall. Bye.